We're getting very close. Very close. To kabloom time for the Clippers. So they lost their third straight playoff home game. Yet they've won all their playoff road games. That doesn't make any sense. It's Kawhi's team. Kawhi's teams don't make any sense. Um, Shocker, they were awful late in the game last night. Listen, both L.A. teams have a hole. It's going to be a very sad weekend in L.A. Uh, The Lakers' hole is health. Some of that is random. Uh, The Clippers' hole is chemistry. But I kind of think... You know, this is this is the way it is. If if AD is going to be your guy, you're just going to be heartbreak hotel. And if Kawhi is your guy, you're not very verbal. Statistically, the Clippers are the only really good team in the NBA that is atrocious late in games, and they were atrocious last night. Rondo's yelling at Kawhi. Kawhi's airballing it. <laughs> they were just a mess. You become your star in the NBA. It's the smallest roster of any professional sport. Soccer rosters are bigger, hockey rosters, baseball rosters, football rosters. It's a very small roster. So the star, whether it's on the plane, meeting rooms, or on the floor, the star dictates the temperature of the room. You become your star. Magic Johnson's teams were fun and joyful. Steph's teams are clever and offensive-minded. Michael Jordan's teams were relentless. Tim Duncan's teams were quiet, methodical, uh, 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 Bird's teams were blue-collar tough. You become your star. It's a tiny, tiny locker room. 13 guys, seven really play. You become your star. Well, we have discovered with Kawhi, San Antonio and Toronto, he wasn't the foundation. He was the assassin that walks in and hits the shot. We've discovered when he's the foundation, your team is weird. The Clippers are an enigma. Kawhi is. He doesn't communicate. Is he playing tonight or is he resting? Is he guarding Luka or not? Who knows? He doesn't talk. He doesn't have press conferences. You have no idea. Last night in key situations in the third and fourth, he's on the bench, not talking. I'm watching him during timeouts. He's not talking. LeBron, Magic, it, it just, he doesn't talk. You don't know. They've become Kawhi. They win all the road games. They lose all their home playoff games. What? That makes no sense. It also makes no sense that last year the Clippers go into the bubble with the deepest roster and literally fall apart. We're sitting here going, what? They go like 10 deep. It makes no sense this year. All this talent, they are the worst clutch team in the NBA statistically that's in the playoffs. In clutch time games this year, the playoffs, look at this. They shoot 18% from the floor. They're 0-3 and minus 22 This is for one of the top five teams in the league. That makes no sense. So it's one of these things where I I think when it's hard to, the Clippers to me are hard to explain. They can't win at home. They win on the road. Why are they terrible late? Why last year was the chemistry so bad? Doc Rivers teams always have great chemistry. Doc Rivers finally had a team. I mean, Blake Griffin and Chris Paul couldn't stand each other. They still had pretty good chemistry. We found that DeAndre Jordan and Chris Paul couldn't stand each other. We never talked to them about chemistry. So I, I think if the foundation of your house is Kauai, it's a haunted house. You can live in a haunted house. I mean, unless it's Amityville Horror. You can live in a haunted house. But there's just, I don't think you're ever going to quite feel with the Clippers that you have all the answers. In the last two years since Kawhi's gotten there, they are a riddle wrapped in an enigma. There's no reason they're that bad late in games. There's no reason the chemistry was terrible. There's Even Kawhi's injury in San Antonio was shrouded in mystery. Suddenly, the one player in Popovich's entire coaching career that wouldn't listen to the doctors. Remember, Kawhi went to Toronto. They were going to give him like a penthouse suite. He didn't talk much. I mean, he was kind of a loner. He's a great player. But you become your star. It's the smallest roster in American professional sports, and I can't get my arms around the Clippers. I just don't trust them. They don't talk much. Rondo, Paul George, Montrez, they shipped him out. Kawhi Leonard, new coach, still same old issues. Let's talk Luka, though. Luka is remarkable. Luka was playing professional basketball in Europe at 14. Now, I I just want you to think about that for a second. Let that bake. At 14, I was just moving out of playing with Legos. 
I had just graduated post Legos. I still watch cartoons. Uh, Luca is now 22. Luca and LeBron James are the best 22 year old basketball players in my life. Luca came into the NBA and averaged 21 points a game at 19. Just think about that. Now, he's not a very good defensive player, but he's the best offensive player in my life I have ever seen at 22. LeBron is the best athlete I've ever seen in my life. At 22, he led his team to a final. 6'9", 250. He used to chase people down, block the ball off the backboard. He stopped doing it about six, seven years ago. Now, Magic was close, but Magic wasn't a great scorer at 22, 18 a game. And plus, Magic inherited Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's not fair. So let's just take Magic out. When you inherit Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, that is not fair. It's Luka's team. It was LeBron's team. The pressure every night for you to score, to defend, to make the play. Um, but here's the key on this, and it's fascinating. Cleveland could never, ever get LeBron a, a Pippen, a Robin, a two. And Mark Cuban could never get Dirk a two. Steve Nash was great once he left. Portland's never, seven, eight years, been able to get Dame a two. And I think it's harder than ever to get a two. Because it used to be if you got a college kid, he was had been in college for three or four years, you, you had so much tape on him, you knew, you had so many scouts that had surrounded him, you knew if he was temperamental, you knew his game. When you give a, a, an NBA scout four years of tape, you better not whiff. Now guys get like, if they get any college tape, it's 30 games and maybe eight where there was an NBA player other than the guy you're drafting on the floor. Some of these guys are out of high school or they go to the G League. It is hard. I mean, Michael Jordan didn't get Scottie Pippen for like four or five years. And by the way, they got lucky to get Pippen. It was a trade with Seattle with Olden Polonies. And that was in an era, I think it was easier to get a two. You were looking at three and four years of college tape. You kind of knew what a guy could do and what a guy couldn't do after a hundred college games. Now you get 30 and there's, and back then there were all sorts of NBA guys in college. So if you watch Michael Jordan's tape, he would guard NBA players. He was defended by NBA players. Now you watch, you know, Jalen Suggs for Gonzaga. He didn't face an NBA guy until like the last two games of his college career. Maybe like a UCLA or a Baylor. So I just think it's harder than ever. And Mark Cuban's a really smart guy, but he could, Porzingis is not it. You can't trust him physically. He's a three, not a two. And Mark's really smart. He's a business guy. But think about all those great Dallas teams. They could never, in an easier era, find Dirk a two. Portland's got smart people running the organization. They can't find Dame a two. And... You know, I, I just, I look around right now with Luca. When you get a Luca, you basically are getting Josh Allen and Mahomes. You are going to be excellent for 12 years. But the difference is in the NFL draft, good God, there are pro bowlers in the fourth round, in the fifth round, Tom Brady in the sixth round. Half the league is undrafted. Doesn't work that way with the NBA draft. You are out of players by about the 14th pick. You are, I mean, the, the number of guys who have been stars in the second round is tiny. Manu Ginobili, Draymond Green, it's pretty tiny. Jokic, obviously, there's some. So I, it, I'm fascinated to watch. Cleveland could never find LeBron at two. Portland hasn't done it. Mark couldn't do it with Dirk. This kid's Mahomes. This kid's Josh Allen. Can they find him a two? In an era where I think it is, in, maybe you have to go buy a two. They tried to do that with Porzingis, but he's a three. So they overpaid to get Porzingis. He's not a two. If he's your two, you're not winning championships. If he's your three, you can win them. Uh, really interested. But he is Luka and LeBron. I've never seen 22-year-olds that good. Never. Um, now, now, fourth quarter, he's a little tentative. I don't think he trusts himself at the free throw line late in games. A little tentative late. It's okay. I mean, LeBron... First, at 22 years old, LeBron was still figuring out defense in the... LeBron could block shots, but he wasn't the same player defensively. 